Not everyone should be your friend. Oh yes, not everyone should be your friend. God's word in Proverbs chapter 12 verse 26 says, The righteous should choose his friends carefully. And this is the word of the Lord. The righteous person is cautious in his friendship. Just anyone isn't supposed to come into your friendship zone. The word of God had admonished us to be cautious in our choice of friends. It isn't spiritual to call anybody you find your friend. We have this kind of a cliche amongst believers. Well, the truth is Jesus didn't call everyone his friends. And we must learn from Jesus. It is so hard to swallow this, I know. But the truth is, as you understand deeper what God's word is bringing to you today, you will be able to digest it. It is the gospel truth that not every single one should be called your friend. If choice applied in the aspect of friends, then not every single one is supposed to be your friend. If choice is applied as God's word says, it says choose your friends carefully. It says the righteous person is cautious of his friend. So if the word of God will point out the word to choose, if the word of God will introduce choice in the place of friendship, then it simply means not every single one is supposed to be called your friend. And all thanks to God for the grace and the understanding that this word will bring to you because it will help you to lead a quiet and peaceful life. It will help you to stay out of unnecessary trouble. It will help you to understand all the things that is necessary for you to have your well-being in place. Even the disciples were in friends with Jesus until they actually had won his trust. And this is the truth of God's word. John chapter 15 verse 15 says, Jesus said, I no longer call you servant because a servant does not know his master's business. Instead, I have called you friends. For everything that I learned from my father, I have made known to you. Understand the word of God. They were not his friends from the beginning. And not everyone should jump into this zone easily. He says, I no longer call you servants now i call you friend so you should come to that point when some people around your life should have end that place of friendship you should come to a point that you know and you can prove it that this person is now worthy to be called your friend they were first in a different category with jesus and this is what i want you to understand and they would later end the friendship with Jesus. So you don't go making known everything about you to just anybody until they get into this zone. You don't bring forth everything about your life and put it to the table thinking the person you are speaking to is your friend. Because when things go south, it is those things they know about you they will use to destroy you. And we have found this a lot already happening. It is very hard even for believers to learn from Jesus from this very particular aspect. It is very hard for believers to learn and follow the pattern of Jesus in these very things. And later, they will cry foul. But truth be told, you take people as brethren as God taught us to love all. You take people in as neighbors, but not as friends. You help people because we have been commanded to, but not in the position of a friend. And this is what I want you to understand. Friendship must be end. And God must help you to understand who you should call your friend. Do you know that God only called and addressed two people as friends? Actually one. The other came close. And you would understand. Only two people were in the whole of scripture. Only two people in the entire book of the law only two people amongst the finest people we had 
that led a powerful and beautiful life in the whole of the scripture. Beloved, this is to make you know that not everyone should be called your friend. So if you've been constantly betrayed, sold out, or backstabbed many times, the simple truth is you allow people into the friend zone, you allow people into the friendship area of your life without trying them first, without them earning that position, without them being worthy to be called a friend. And also you have taken too many people as supposed friends who you thought are friends because of your kingdom mindset, but truly were never your friend. And you must be very careful about this. Because people who come around you because of some selfish interest, when the things are not in place again, you will know their true self. You will know their true nature. So there are those people who you can look at and you know very definitely that these people shouldn't fit in to my friendship zone. And there are some things the word of God had brought to our understanding. So let's learn from God and uproot people who have not earned this from our life. I mean from our friendship zone. It is not to keep malice with anyone because you are taking people out of your friendship zone. No, but you are just going to be more reserved with the things you do with them. You will be very much reserved and timed with the way you express some details with these particular people. People who were never truly your friend will show their true self when you are in your tough times. Jesus experienced this in different ways. Judas did this against Jesus and Jesus had rightly called him a friend. When he said, I no longer call you servant but friends, Judas was amongst those he was speaking to, but it was the same one who would turn his back against him. Even the very other ones Jesus also addressed as friends did the same but on a different scale. In the same chapter that Judas betrayed Jesus, Peter, his own chief friend, denied him as well. All in one chapter. And you will find this in Luke chapter 22 from verse 47 down to 62. Thank God for one who stood out among them till the very end, even by the cross that Jesus would hand over and entrust the well-being of his beloved mother into his hands in the person of John the Beloved. John chapter 19 verse 25 to 27. This is the point I want you to understand. This one got very closer to Jesus to the very end. And no wonder he had addressed him as the beloved one. He had addressed him as his bosom friend. When you find that one who will be there at the cross with you, when you find that one who will be there, cherish those people. Those who will stand by you when you are going through your pain. Jesus was agonizing in pain right there on the cross. But John the Beloved was right there till the very end. Those are the people you call your friends. Many people were close and connected to Job, but only four will stay by him till the very end. So I want you to know that there are people who you should call your friends. There are people who will be there in your trying times and remain with you. For seven days, the friends of Job, they remained with him. They remained in the ashes with him. They were there mourning with him without saying a word. Those are true friends. Those who will stick to you in your times of pain. Not the ones who will come to you when things are all rosy and beautiful. But when things are not in order, you can't find them. Beloved, those are not your friends. So when you find those ones who will be by your side when you are being persecuted, who will be by your side when you are going through the storms of your life, cherish those people because they are your friends. And guess what? Jesus had made known another profound statement in an earlier verse in John chapter 15 verse 14. He said, you are my friends if you do what I command. Take note of the word, command. Is a very strong word but to help us understand based on this context command is a signal that actuates a device so folks it is simple very simple to know if the signals is often towards wrongs from the people you call your friends defriend them unfriend them immediately if the things that come from them the signals are not going to help you 
prove your worth with Christ, you need to unfriend them first. Anyone who makes you feel very comfortable around sin isn't your friend. Had I'm not known, it would have been a life to lead on the throne of the father King David and be the nest as he was the heir. But wrong and evil signal that he didn't pay attention to finished him very early. And you'll find that in 2 Samuel chapter 13 from verse 1 down to verse 33. The supposed friend who is called Jonadab, who gave all the wrong signals, also was the one who broke the news of his death without any form of remorse that he led him towards that direction that destroyed his life. Dear one, watch out for those who have subtle agenda around you. Jonadab knows the grave consequences of his evil and wrong suggestions, but he gave it anyway. Why? Because he was not supposed to be the friend of Amnon. You should look out for those things that would bring things that are hurtful around your life because it will not help you. And also, there are some special qualities that you should see and attach yourself. And this is important for balancing. So beloved, special qualities and action is key as well. After David ended his talk with Saul, the soul of Jonathan was neat to David and he loved him as his own soul. You can find that in 1 Samuel chapter 18 verse 1. That friendship will later save David's life two chapters after. So have you found that friend with those special qualities whose interest is to see that you are safe? Those are the people you should call your friend. Jonathan proved this and he ended Evan's recommendation to the latter by his faithfulness in friendship that he displayed. So my dearly beloved, the colleague isn't your friend yet. That roommate isn't your friend until proven worthy. I mean that one that you ride on the same car, on the same bus with the work every day isn't your friend. But it doesn't mean we won't love all men. God's word has told us to love all. But take note still, beloved. Even those who were in friends with God were loved by him. And mind you, it was only two persons in the whole of scripture that had that quality to get into that friendship zone with God. In James 2 verse 23, and the scripture was fulfilled that says, Now Abraham believed God, and it was counted unto him for righteousness, and it was called God's friend. It was called God's friend in the whole of scripture. And God only spoke to Moses as a man who speak to his friend in Exodus 33 verse 11. So I want you to know that it is not everyone you see that you should gather and put around your friendship zone. It isn't everyone that fits into your friendship zone. So the problem has been you're having so many supposed people that you call your friends who are just friending me. If you don't know who a friend of me is, there are those people who truly combine the characteristics of being a friend and an enemy to you when things go south. And there are all the extreme cases of friend of me, those who will come around you by all means to cause havoc and do evil against you when you are not paying attention. Beloved, please wisen up and stay clear. The word of God has said, the righteous person is cautious in his friendship. They choose their friends carefully. And this is the potent word of God. My prayer is that you will get the truth of his word and apply it with wisdom so you can live a life that is void of issues and lead a beautiful life. In the name of Jesus. It is well with you, beloved. God bless you. And shalom.